everybody. Thanks for joining us today on the Daily Edition. A mum at 54, model and actress Bridget Nielsen opens up about her rocky road to parenthood the fifth time round. Plus, her birthing video was seen by more than 80,000 people, but it's what led up to that moment that will leave you speechless. Author Amy Malloy is live with her incredible story of overcoming the odds. Then from Roseanne's reaction to Donald's distraction, we break down the body language blunders that got the world talking. Also today, the surfer, his freak accident and the chopper rescue that went horribly wrong. Just wait till you hear what happened next. Time now to get the very latest from the 7 Newsroom. Thanks, Ryan. Tom, Sally, good to be with you both. Good afternoon, everyone. 100 firefighters are at the scene of an intense blaze at a block of luxury flats in northwest London. It broke out on the top floor of the five-storey building in West Hampstead around 1am. Flames can be seen billowing from the windows of the Victorian-era block as thick smoke drifts across the city. A nearby pub is offering shelter to residents affected by the fire. Two of the country's major media organisations, Nine Entertainment and Fairfax Media, have announced they are merging. It is the biggest media merger in Australian history. Analysts, though, are saying it's a Nine takeover. The company will be called Nine. It will also combine some of the biggest media assets, including the Sydney Morning Herald, the Melbourne Age, the Financial Review and the Macquarie Radio Network. Bringing them together enables to strong Australian brands with great long, very long traditions uh, to be able to be more secure. So yeah. on that basis, I welcome it. The deal still needs ACCC approval and shareholder support. The Fairfax board is giving its endorsement. At least 80 people have now lost their lives in the terrifying wildfires which have devastated Greece. They're the deadliest in modern history, Greek history. Surviving uh, survivors are describing the blaze as hailstorms of flames. Seven's Rob Scott is in the fire zone in Marty. Well, it's been about three days since the fire front tore through this seaside town and only now has the true scale of the devastation uh, been exposed. The local mayor says of the almost 2,000 homes which stood here on Monday prior to the fires, 1,500 of them have been destroyed. The danger has passed, but the devastation is clear. Buildings still smouldering, those who survived left with nothing. Overstretched emergency services have the grim task of searching burnt out cars and homes, looking for the missing. Many were trapped in their apartments and vehicles as the flames raced through, whipped up by an extreme wind. We tried to help the firefighters and the police to take care of the dead bodies and count how many of the cars, houses, dead bodies we had. It was like, it was like a movie. You were seeing these things in the, in the movies and you were saying nothing, this cannot happen to me. The picturesque seaside town of Marty was one of the hardest hit. Many tried escaping by driving away, but ended up trapped on the narrow roads. Others caught on cliff tops as hillsides erupted into a sea of flames. We couldn't go anywhere because the fire went down to the sea. Everything that, was, uh, that uh, could be burned, it got burned. Nothing was left. The Defence Force has released video of the military trying to rescue those who outran the blaze, stranded on beaches. This morning, survivors are returning home to devastated communities. We lost everything, of course. Nothing left? Uh, it is a, a complete uh, house. Complete with, uh, house, yes. And now it's uh, ruins. In Rafina, they've come together in a relief operation as focus turns to the survivors, handing out food, water and medicines. Flags across the country are flying at half-mast as a mark of respect. Locals have now formed a kind of neighbourhood watch, patrolling the streets at night, searching for survivors and anyone who needs help, basically. But a major focus of those patrols is also looking for looters, who have already moved in. Rob Scott there in Greece. A man has damaged Donald Trump's star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame with a pickaxe. On the other side of the US, the president lashed out at his former lawyer over claims the pair discussed how to pay out a former Playboy model. Once again, Donald Trump's own words are coming back to haunt him, but this time they were caught on tape. 
Uh, Mr. President, are you worried about what Michael Cohen is going to say to prosecutors? Thank you, Caitlin. Let's keep going. Are you worried about what is on the other tapes, Mr. President? A recording in 2016 by the president's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, revealed the then-candidate discussing money to silence Playboy model Karen McDougal. The president has denied her claims of an affair. When it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to... So at issue, whether there was an effort to conceal the payment, a potential violation of campaign finance laws. No, 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 I got, no, no, no. On Twitter, President Trump lashed out at his one-time confidant. What kind of lawyer would tape a client? I don't care about the president's personal life, but I think the issue that matters is his truthfulness. And in a major back down, today Donald Trump postponed his much-criticized planned second summit with Vladimir Putin at the White House. He now wants to wait until the Russian investigation is over. One man is so angry with the American leader, he used a pickaxe to smash the president's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I'm like, why are you hitting a star? Like, you know, like, man, what did Donald Trump do to you? He just came and started hitting it. Then he went around the corner and, and I think he left. It's at least the second time the star has been attacked. In the United States, Mike Amor, 7 News. Australian businessman Dick Smith has broken down in tears while announcing plans to close his food business after nearly two decades. Even though I'm glad to have been able to do 19 years of business, I failed. I failed. And you see, the people in the Carrick Henry, I said, I will keep your jobs. I couldn't. It's beyond me. The 74-year-old said he had created about $480 million for Australian farmers and processors and has given more than $10 million to charity. What a great Australian he is. Italian researchers have made a major breakthrough in the search for life on Mars. A satellite has spotted a massive underground lake of water about 20 kilometres wide under the planet's southern polar ice cap. It's the first time liquid water has been found on Mars. Scientists claim it increases the chances that life exists or once existed on the red planet. That's quite the discovery, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, we'll just wait for the movie. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Not too next. far away. Exactly. <laughs> Diving. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Still to come, Roseanne Barr's bizarre new uh, TV nude show, and the Aussie reporter who got the saucy scoop. Also ahead, does Bill Shorten have a likability problem? Our body language expert weighs in on the habits that are hurting his poll numbers. But next, it is one of Dolly Parton's biggest hits. Sequel of the film, but who will be joining her? We'll have all of those details next.